Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. You're so smart, kiddo. Curve the cube will now initiate. Welcome to episode number 107 of Curve the Cube, the podcast where dreamers become doers. I am your host, Jemmy Lagonier of the Flintstone Media Podcast Network, and I'm probably also the last person to tell you this, but Happy New Year! I mean, what I should really be wishing everyone is Happy Super Bowl Recovery Day, day right? But Happy New Year nonetheless. I know it's February. Please forgive me. It has been so long since I've been able to bring my voice to you guys. And oh, how I've missed you so much, my Curvis. I love bringing you podcasts and helping others podcast. But I had to put it all aside for a little while. And I'm ready to now tell you all why. In order to do that, I need to talk to you about my son. Now, I don't really talk about him too much. His name is Jordan, and he is simply my reason for everything. So, in order to explain this hiatus, I need to first explain who my son is. So, like I said, his name is Jordan, and he is just shy of five years old, Sometimes seems like he's going on 15. <laughs> he is both a Spider-Man and a Peter Pan impersonator and an amateur photographer to boot. He is a Toy Story fan club leader, Marvel movie critic and toy curator, and defender of galaxies near and far. He is an actor, a drummer, guitar player, an astronaut, an amateur whistler, builder of Legos, a prayer leader, and a mini Mr. Fix-It. He is kind, and he is funny. He is the class clown always wanting to make people laugh. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a podcast project with him in the future. Um, and that was actually him doing the Pledge of Allegiance that you heard at the intro opening. He's generous, and he's affectionate, and just simply the best person I know. It is an absolute privilege and a blessing to be his mother. And he has been my little superhero these last few weeks more than ever. He has been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called HSP. HSP causes vasculitis, basically meaning that his blood vessels burst throughout his body. He's had to endure rashes of blood bursts, basically tiny little bruises all over, swollen joints, arthritis, doctor visits, needles, lots and lots of medicine, um, belly pain, sometimes throughout the night, headaches, not being able to walk at times. But you know what, guys? He's he's never complained once not once well I take that back <laughs> I'm not including the doctor visits and uh, you know having to go back to school when he was ready he definitely definitely complained about that but from the pain and the spots and the swelling and he just kept on keeping on he was he's my little champion I'm so proud of him. But his diagnosis was sudden and blindsiding. And I had to put a halt to everything that was non-essential. Because, let's be honest, I mean, curving your cube isn't easy. And as some of you know, I mean, as much as this podcast is about how others have curved their cube and interviewing great guests who are just really doing amazing things, it's also evolved and become about curving my own cube. 
And as some of you know, I'm a single mom, you know? I spend many late nights working and barely sleeping. And I suffer through migraines, whatever it takes to get the job done. But I'm pretty much always tired because of it. And that's no way to live when you need to handle what is most important. In part to stay focused, and in part to stay rested and ready, I really just had to put podcasting aside for a little while. I am so grateful, so grateful that he seems to be bouncing back from the HSP and headed toward a full remission and recovery. But he still needs to be closely monitored by a kidney specialist, and it could come back in the future. But for now, I am counting our blessings that he is no longer in pain or anything. I mean, it was just awful, you know, between spots and swelling. It was just not an easy thing to witness, especially when it's the person that you love most in the world and it's something that you just feel completely powerless to do anything about. It was awful. So <clears throat> thank you to all of you who have been waiting patiently for new episodes to roll out, for my other podcast, I guess after hours to keep going, for updates in general. I've loved and appreciated hearing from all of you during this hiatus. Janet from Green Acres wrote me a particularly sweet note that, <laughs> that simply said, I need my weekly dose of motivation. Please don't stop. <laughs> Janet, don't worry. I won't. I promise. So where does that take us? Where are we now? Well, clearly, I'm back on the podcast, so that's a good sign, right? Um, I've been trying to catch up on all the 2017 prep I was supposed to be taking care of weeks and weeks ago at the end of 2016. Eek, so <laughs> new episodes will stu soon start rolling out again. Um, you know, it's just, it's taking a little bit of time. I still have to, you know, keep one eye open on this whole HSP thing with my son as I dive back in. So it's kind of like a one foot in slowly back in kind of a situation right now. But for my first podcast in 2017, I thought it very apropos to do a recap of 2016. And so in Curving Your Cube, you know, this, this whole movement to inspire people to do what they really, really love and keep themselves passionate about something and honoring their true selves, what I found in talking to other people who are doing that is regardless of what that dream is, whether it's, you know, how to be an artist or writer, musician, entrepreneur, uh, from things that are, uh, you've heard of before, like cutting an album to things that are so outside the box. I know I'd never heard of it before, like underwater photography, <laughs> um, shout out to Chris Goog, um, Curving Your Cue can, can take on so many different shapes and sizes, and it's been very interesting interviewing everybody, and what I've seen is that we all have very similar struggles when it comes to going with the gusto, right? Because when you're pursuing your dreams, there's no half-assing it, people. You pretty much have to go full force if you want to be successful, and everybody has similar struggles. How do we fit in the time when we're still doing pursuing other things full-time because we have to pay bills? Um, how do we answer our own questions? Who do we talk to? How do we find a mentor? How do we find a local group of like-minded individuals who are doing something similar? How do I find people to trust that I can co collaborate with? If I'm focused on my creative endeavors, how do I manage the business side of the endeavors? So, so many things that we're all um, commonly struggling with and it's been really fascinating to see these conversations unfold and and find those areas of commonality i mean everyone i've talked to has that common thread that there is a need for them to do what they do what they love whether it's because um it's always been their specific 
dream, uh, like specifically wanting to be a musician, uh, you know, a dream of being on stage, of acting, a specific dream of um, inventing a particular thing. But others are doing it because it's a simple, basic, rebellious need not to have to answer to the man. <laughs> I know I've definitely interviewed a lot of people who have that common thread as well. Um, you know, they just want to be able to do things on their own and craft their life to be uh, as independently driven and designed as it can possibly be. And there's a lot of that I'm finding in my guests as well. It's really, really fascinating. Um, I've also been f so grateful to talk to the kids. As you know that I have a series called Curve the Cube Kids. So um, I was able to catch back up with Alex Arietti, one of my favorite, favorite people. He's a young DJ and absolutely fantastic. And he was, I think, my second repeat pod uh, podcast guest of my Curve the Cube journey. And to be able to meet Erin Reese de Jarnet and see all the incredible things that she's accomplished this year and working on her second Dolly Parton film, to meeting a whole local Lego League team from Ponciana Elementary on their way to a bigger national competition. I mean, kids are so inspiring and they have so far fewer, um, you know, mental inhibitions. So to listen to the conversations I have with them and hear how they're envisioning their dreams and to see how people are, you know, listeners how are applying those things to their own, their own journeys. It's, it's really it's such a great thing. I love it, guys. I love it, love it, love it. And I've also had the, the pleasure of covering some and the privilege of covering some really strong issues this year. Um, I remember I sat down with Ken, Ken Bratvogel, who is a gun shop owner, and we got to have a really interesting discussion on gun ownership and, and, and gun regulations in this country. It was really, really cool to talk to him. Obviously, he's a gun enthusiast, and to also hear him share some concerns about the lack of gun regulations. It was, it was a really interesting conversation. And, um, oh, and I went down to a post-election protest and got to interview people right there on the street um, with on conflicting sides of everything in effort to find common ground. So that was really fascinating and really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, I've been had some crazy guests. It's been a lot, a lot of fun this year. So I encourage everyone, go back, and if you've missed anything, go back and listen to interviews I've had with some very fascinating, pe fascinating people. Like I mentioned earlier, Chris Goog. I mean, he's, he's done some incredible things going all over the world and uh, photographing cool species and specimens underwater and um, how he's able to take, you know, just general photography skills and apply them to a whole new environment. It's awesome. <laughs> and people who've really influenced their communities, like Exhibit Trio, they're artists, but they're also community influencers. And Jeff DiMario and, and Darius Murray, who give back to their community in a completely different way by helping those among us who are in need of a little extra help or community services. I've also had the pleasure of sitting down with some budding rock stars like Colin Robinson and his whole crew and experiencing enthusiasm in a whole other way. It started off, as I recall, in our in my car going after after one of their performances from from the venue to the after party at a restaurant where we went out and just sat and talked and had drinks and podcasted right there. And it was so much fun to then meet up with, 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 with Uzi and with Truth and get to have podcasts with them too. And just seeing different perspectives. I mean, they're all like working together to support each other on their musical journeys, but they are so different in their own, in their own right. So Bunny rock stars like that are just just so fun, and I finally had Virginia <laughs> Sinicki come on to close out my KVJ podcast trifecta. If you recall, I had uh, Kevin Ralston as my pilot episode way way back in 2014. Seems so long ago now, and also Jason Pennington was on uh, early either early 2015. Yeah, I think it was early 2015. So I finally got Virginia on, and so that was a lot of fun. 
I also got to interview some cool actors who were ranging from projects like Walking Dead and Bloodline to, um, oh gosh, Tammy Stronoff. She was from my favorite movie of all time, The NeverEnding Story. She came on to celebrate my 100th episode and it was an absolute dream come true she now has a dance studio and we talked a lot about how important it is to keep your dreams alive and keep pursuing what you love it was just a wonderful wonderful time talking to her and um more on the local influencers you know i've had some people who are local celebrities and local local influencers doing really cool things like josh cohen of vspn west palm jennifer martin a local yoga teacher joe russo who's all about influencing technology in palm beach county with palm beach tech um he's also a co-host of mine on eggheads after hours so check out that podcast as well and roland barrera who's a local artist and activist so i've had such really great great people i've even turned the tables on myself and was interviewed using questions that you guys sent in which ended up eventually inspiring these exact podcasts like this my solo cast so all in all it 2016 man what a big big year and of course i couldn't have done it without my pod squad my boys jay and scotty i know so many of you love I love, love our pod squad episodes because we get out and we just talk about silly stuff and crazy stuff and we laugh and we share stories and have a good time and we will have many, 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 many more of these episodes coming your way, we promise. It's just that Scotty travels a lot. He does light show produ- production stuff and he's he does it all over the world. So he's traveling a lot and Jay and I are both so super busy in our own right and it's just been tough to get us all together in the same room, but I promise that more Pod Squad hilarity will ensue in 2017. <laughs> so, yeah, 2016 was amazing. But as we look ahead, I kind of want to share you, share with you an update with you on how I've been curving my own cube and um, what's been going on this year. So, for anybody who's missed it, uh, I started a second podca- podcast I briefly mentioned once or twice already called Eggheads After Hours. And what's Eggheads After Hours, some buddies of mine, like Joe Russo, also Aaron Warmus, who you've heard on his own uh, episode earlier in, the, in Curve the Cube History, and Kate Volman, who's due to be on sometime in the future. Uh, we get around and we talk about community and tech and how they influence each other. So we talk about all things tech in our community. And it's really, really fun. It's called Eggheads After Hours. And there will be a very, very big announcement coming for that podcast soon. So stay tuned. Also, this year, I have recently relaunched my company, Flintstone Media, which is the parent company for Curve the Cube. And um, I'm still doing big things in the way of digital marketing. So I'm focusing now on digital marketing, i.e. lots of website projects, social media projects for clients, um, and of course content creation, so video production, and of course podcasting production. So I relaunched my website um, about a month ago, I think, and it was a really fun rollout. And so go to flintstonemedia.com, flintstonemedia.com, and check that out. I'm really proud of it. Um, So if you're local or not local and have uh, digital marketing needs, hey, guess what? I can do that. It's pretty cool. Um, And on that front, Flintstone Media is actually entertaining a potential partnership in the future with another company. So stay tuned on big news on that. It's been a lot of fun. You know, I've been building Flintstone Media since 2014. I, I started and initiated the company a few months before I started the podcast. And it has been challenging, but liberating. You know, I used to be working in corporate America. I had an um, an a career as an analyst for a great many years, about 15 years, and realized I really loved marketing and wanted to see how do I get myself into that, into that industry. And the tough thing is, guys, (laughs) if you have no experience doing a thing, (laughs) companies, funny enough, don't really want to hire you to do that thing. 
kind of ironic, right? <laughs> I don't know why. So my advice to you if you want to change careers is to do what I did and start doing a lot of that on the side. Do some of it pro bono, Start then start charging like minimal amounts to people, you know, start with your friends and slowly expand your network. Definitely become incorporated right away, set up a separate bank account right away. Um, and then that way you have a nice clean history for your company and it already has, you know, good credit history that you're building up on it. So while you're still working full time and then figuring out how to break that bond and when you're ready to make it a full-time commitment at least you have a good amount of history good amount of clientele of, of testimonials some portfolio of your work built in so that's what I did with Flintstone Media it took about about a year plus for me to feel comfortable um, transitioning and then about another super dirty year <laughs> known as 2016 when it was a real struggle financially and you know it was really challenging, but it was worth it. Curving my cube has been worth it. So, so anyways, I say all that to say that uh, 2016 was a year where I exclusively worked under the umbrella of my own company, Flintstone Media. I'm really proud of that. And so 2017, as I look ahead, it's going to be bigger and better things. And to entertain the idea that now another company wants to potentially partner with what I've built is just, it's really flattering and really exciting. So look forward to that soon. And in 2016, I also established the Flintstone Media Podcast Network. And so my idea with that is to grow a network of shows that support each other and help each other grow, help each other expand listening audiences. So if you're interested in having your podcast become part of the Flintstone Media Podcast Network with Curve the Cube, with Eggheads After Hours, with with uh, Trio Tummies, with Vivid Arts. Just go to Flintstone. Oh, excuse me, FSMPodcastNetwork.com and check it out and uh, shoot me a note. And also in 2016, <clears throat> I established. Well, I kind of took over a dormant meetup group. There was this meetup group called, called Palm Beach Podcasters that hadn't had lost its organizer for a while when I stumbled upon it it was actually about to be deactivated on meetup so I decided to step up and become the organizer and in September I relaunched it we had our first meeting it was a lot of fun I think about 10 people showed and it's slowly been growing since then I actually launched a new website for it called palmbeachpodcasters.com so if you're in South Florida and you are into podcasting or considering becoming into podcasting please 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 visit palmbeachpodcasters.com if you have a show submit it to the directory it's another home base for your show it's a lot of fun and we meet up about every six weeks where we share information tips and tricks experiences you know we have people from uh, people who haven't started podcasting yet through been podcasting like me for a few years to podcasting to 10 or 12 years so wide range of experiences um, everything from sports based shows to finance shows are represented in Palm Beach podcasters .com. To shows of inspiration and entertainment, like like this one. Um, to shows about books, like like the Book of Life uh, by Heidi Rabinowitz. So check out palmishpodcasters.com. Our next meetup is actually coming this Friday. So if you're available, Friday at 6.30 at the Coffee District in Del Rey, we will be featuring a Hall of Famer, Danny Pena, of Gamer Tag Radio as a special guest. I'm so excited to host him. So February 10th is a Friday, this Friday at uh, 6.30, Gamer Tag Radio's Danny Pena. He's a Hall of Famer, in case I didn't mention that once or twice. And he's also going to be a keynote speaker at PodFest this year, so I'm very, very excited about that. And speaking of of PodFest, guys. So one of my big goals, now we're getting 2017, right? One of my big goals for 2017 was to become more engrossed in the podcast community. So I've, like I said, I've started Palm Beach Podcasters, started the Flintstone Media Podcast Network. So I'm building up my own networks down here, but I want to be more ingrained in the podcasting 
uh, you know, overall stratosphere, right? So how do I do that? Well, one goal for me this year is to go to more, or any, because I haven't been to any yet, <laughs> podcast conventions. <laughs> so the first one on the radar is PodFest, which happens later this month, and I thought there is no way I'll be able to go to PodFest because, I mean, let's face it, people, po- conventions are, you know, they're not they're not cheap because there's a ticket price, right, and then there's travel expenses and hotel and blah, 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 and uh, like I said, 2016 was a difficult, dirty financial year for me. Um, but worth it, worth it, worth it. <laughs> and so to think that right off the bat, end of February, I could be at a convention was just like a complete pipe dream. But it was right, not that far away from me in Orlando. And I thought, maybe, maybe, maybe. Then I heard through the grapevine, a little grapevine called Libsyn's podcast known as The Feed, that uh, PodFest had a pay it forward program. And basically their pay it forward program, like some organize, some of their organizers set aside three day passes to give to people who showed a lot of promise in podcasting and, and they, like they need a break, right? They need a break and some help to get there. So I submitted myself and guys, wouldn't you know, I got it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all the folks at PodFest for allowing me to come for granting me a three-day pass. I am so tickle pink and excited, guys. Um, and if, and speaking of PodFest, if you can make it to the meetup, Palm Beach Podcasters meetup this Friday, I also, also have a an extra promo code to give y'all discounts on your tickets. If you can go to PodFest, please, I would love it. Reach out to me at Media Flintstone. Um, <clears throat> at gmail.com and I will send you my promo for the 20% off that I got from PodFest and I hope to see you guys out there. It's the end of the of the month, February 23rd through 25th in Orlando and I'm so excited to go. Like I said, Danny Pena of Gamertag Radio is a keynote and um, one of our, my other members of Palm Beach Podcasters known as Carrie, Lep, Carrie Lutz, he's um had a, he's been podcasting for about 12 years, I think, and uh, his podcast is called, I believe it's called Financial Survivors Network. I'm 90% sure I have that right. Financial Survivors Network. Ooh, I apologize, Carrie. Um, but if you go to palmbeachpodcasters.com, you'll, you'll get more information about him there. And he's going to be a speaker at PodFest, too. I've been... Uh, you know, this this Curve the Cube is, is hosted by Libsyn, Liberated Syndication, the best in the industry, and uh, they're actually one of the key sponsors of PodFest. So now I'll get to meet the people that I've been casually emailing back and forth with for the last year plus, you know, two years. So I am so excited to know that when I get to PodFest, not only, first of all, that I'm going... <laughs> Second of all, that I'll get to meet a bunch of people that I've been idolizing over at Libsyn. Third, that I'll get to meet a p- bunch of people in general at, who I've been idolizing in the podcast industry forever. Also, that I'll get there knowing Danny Pena and Carrie Lutz, who are two of the speakers there. I mean, dream come true, guys. I'm so excited. And maybe I'll even get to stop off at Disney World. I mean, come on. <laughs> dream come true. So that is how I'm kicking off my 2017, is with a brand new FlintstoneMedia.com website, with a trip to PodFest in my immediate future, with a son who is bouncing back from his diagnosis. Like, I am so stoked for 2017. And not only that, but I have some amazing guests lined up for you guys, so I'm sure you are just as stoked too. So... I am revisiting with one of my closest friends and uh, earliest podcast guest, Charles Milling. He is a unbelievable musician. He's Delray based, New Orleans raised, classically trained, and he's out with a new album since we last spoke. So he his band is called Live Hymnal, and his his album is just beautiful. Procession is beautiful, and what's on even better 
I mean, I feel so lucky. I actually am in the background as one of the choir members in, in, the, <laughs> in the music. So if you listen to the album, technically you're hearing my voice, but um, good luck figuring out which one, of, which one of them is me. But I am so excited to talk to him because he is always fascinating. He is a true down to the soul, um, you know, musician so you're gonna love 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 him and so i like, excited to talk to him again and of course like i mentioned danny pena gamer tag radio podcasting hall of famer inductee and my next meetup special guest so i'm excited to have him also javier martinez he is a local motivational speaker he helps companies eliminate the generation gap in the workplace and he's just like I mean, I've spoken to this guy. I haven't met him in person yet, but we've spoken on the phone a bunch of times. I've actually um, done a little work on his website through uh, a collaborative company that I work with called Juicy Results. And <laughs> Javier, I mean, if you get off the phone and you don't have a smile on your face or feel super pumped for the rest of your day, it's on you, okay? He's awesome. So I'm really excited to bring his his his... Um, flavor of motivation to the podcast. And I also have uh, lined up Adam Lowry. He is another fellow podcaster from the Cognitive Rampage podcast, where he talks about mental health issues. So he's located in Orlando and will also uh, will actually be recording something when I go up there for PodFest. So that's going to be really, really exciting. And um, in 2017, I'm looking forward to finally, finally, finally having a mobile app for Curve the Cube. It's been a long time coming, folks. I am so sorry. There have been delays after delays. I uh, Just when I thought I had the money to put into the project, I mean, the transmission fails on my car or I need new tires or whatever. So I promise you, though, it is a goal for 2017. I will absolutely be rolling out a mobile app. That is a commitment. So, <clears throat> like I said, I'm, I'm just continuing to curve my cube as much as I can and, and be an example of what I preach um, and continuing to bring more examples together, wonderful guests to continue to inspire and motivate you to curve your own cube, to find your own passion, to do your own thing, to go from being a dreamer to becoming a doer. We all have it within ourselves to find that thing that we love to do and and ignore the naysayers and, and overcome the fears and find the answers to the questions and the conflicts that are in, in our way and curve our way around those things. So in 2017, guys, thank you so much for for the last 106 wonderful episodes. It's been a pleasure to, to, to serve you in this capacity as host and producer of Curve the Cube podcast. And I just want to say, let's all buckle up for this wild ride that we are in together, known as 2017. And I look forward to bringing you more and more podcasts this year. So like I said, enjoy, find your passion, and do your thing. Keep curving your cube, guys. Love you. You have successfully curved the cube. Well, if, if little kids are watching Beyond, they'll get really scared. Really? And if little kids watch uh, Casper, they will freak out. <laughs> Because because they because little kids think Casper is a bad ghost, but Casper is a good ghost. Oh, okay. He's friendly. But do you know what's awesome for Casper? What is that he floats around a lot of times mm. and flies. Mm-hmm. But but there's a movie called Santa. Called Santa? Yeah. Okay, tell me about Santa, the movie. Santa has this cool sleigh. Uh huh. And it has two rockets on the back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, and then this grown up has these Christmas slippers. Mm hmm. And then, and then when he jumps, they just 
there's a thing. <gasps> really? And then, and then, and then the elf mm -hmm. tried to put it, tried to put the bike back in the present <laughs> because, because the, because the, because the grown up just, just, just pulled it out. Oh. Just, just, just opened the present. But the but the elf was putting it back together. But Santa forgot to bring it to the kid. Santa forgot to bring the bike to the kid. Oh in. no! And then whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. They bringed it. They did. And then whoosh, 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 whoosh. Back to the North Pole. <laughs> because that's where the because that's where the elves live and the Santa. And Santa lives, and the grown-up lives. Oh, yeah. That's where they live at the moon. And the, and the army lives at the North Pole, too. The army? Yeah. Oh. There's, there's an army in Santa. Oh, really? Santa has an army? Yeah. Oh. He has an army. That. One army! Is it made of elves or people? People. Oh. They just start to go crank, crank, crank. Crunk, bite, bite. Oh man! Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. And then swoosh, bow. That happens. <laughs> but shadow hunters, shadow hunters, I don't like it. Well, this is a long talk, and I. Like this day, but thank you for joining me. <laughs> thank you, Jordan. You're so awesome. High five. Flintstone Media is ready to be your resource to serve your digital marketing and podcasting needs. Ready to ignite your brand, your voice, and your media? Head to FlintstoneMedia.com. As always, thank you to DJ John Hitta for the show's music bed. To stay up on the latest with my guests, follow Kurt the Cube on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Or head to KurtTheCube.com. <laughs>